Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And if you're new here, my name is Edward Smith and welcome to my YouTube channel. And in today's video, we're going to be having a look at Mackie's brand new CR3 XBT White Limited Edition Studio Monitors. We're gonna go through all the features, we're gonna have a look at the build quality of these speakers, and then we're also gonna do a little bit of a sound test comparison between them and the PreSonus Iris E3.5s, because who knows, these might be the next studio monitors for your setup. So the first thing that we get when we unbox these studio monitors are a whole bunch of cables. And the cables that are included are an RCA to auxiliary, which is probably for your phone. And then we also have our black and red connecting cable, which is the cable you're going to use to connect these two studio monitors to each other. Because one studio monitor is an active studio monitor and the other one is a passive studio monitor. And other than that, in the unboxing process, we have our first monitor, which is our active monitor, which has a cable connected to it that's not removable, so the cable stays permanently connected. And then we also have our passive monitor. And then last but not least, we have some paperwork, which includes some software, Pro Tools first, and some plugins. So that's really nice, especially if you're a beginner looking to start out and you want some really nice software, this is a great option. So first off, looking at these studio monitors, in terms of first impressions, I must say, the white monitors look really nice. They look really, really nice. So moving on to the front panel of these studio monitors, the first thing that we have is our power slash volume knob, which really does feel quite solid. It's nice and smooth and the click is nice and loud as well, so you know when it's on and when it's off. And it has this nice texture on the knob, so if your hands are kind of oily, maybe sweaty, you still have some grip to turn the knob the way you want it. And then we also have our headphone connection, which is for those of you that wanna have your headphones connected to the studio monitors. And then we have our push to pair Bluetooth connecting button, which is not an option you get with the CR3Xs, which are $20 cheaper. You're paying $20 more for this Bluetooth functionality, which is really nice for those of you that wanna connect these studio monitors to your setup, but also have it for Bluetooth listening from your phone, maybe do some content creating and then you know connect your phone. For us music producers, we don't really use Bluetooth functions in studio monitors as often, so it isn't really a necessity for us. And most higher end studio monitors don't have Bluetooth connectivity either. But for those of you that are looking for a nice pair of studio monitors, budget around $100 with a Bluetooth connection function, these have that in them. Moving on to the back of the studio monitors, the first thing that we have is our TRS left and right input connections. And these connections are for those of you that wanna connect your studio monitors to maybe an audio interface for a home studio setup or a home studio vibe. But just a reminder, you will need to balance TRS cables to make the whole connection successfully. So make sure you get those. I will leave a link down below just to help you out. But getting back to the back panel of these studio monitors, we also get our red and black connections on both our active monitor and our passive monitor. And as you might've guessed, these connections are for connecting both of these studio monitors to each other with our black and red cable. And then we have our unbalanced RCA connections, which is for another cable they provided, our RCA to auxiliary, just for you to connect your phone to these studio monitors if you don't wanna connect them via Bluetooth. And then we also have a left and right powered select position switch, which is mainly for the active studio monitor. Wherever you place it, that's where you want to switch it to. So if I have my active studio monitor on the left of me, I'm gonna have it on the left. And if I have my active monitor on the right, I will have it on the right. So the reason you want that is mainly more for music production where we pan our instruments left or right and you need to know exactly where they're lying. Then you need to put these monitors left or right specifically. But for those of you that are just looking to get some desktop speakers for content creation, gaming, maybe just music listening in general, don't worry too much about that. It's not that important in your case. 
So, now that we've had a look at the studio monitors, all of their features, what comes in the box, the overall build quality, it's time to move on to the sound test. And for those of you that don't know, I don't like to do a sound test just of the studio monitors themselves. In my opinion, the best sound test is a sound test where you can compare it to something else. And in today's video, I'm gonna be comparing these to the most popular $100 studio monitors out there, which are the PreSonus Eris E3.5s. They are, in my opinion, the best sounding studio monitors under $100. So comparing these to these will really be a fair comparison just to see if these studio monitors can actually keep up in terms of sound. So let's have a listen to these studio monitors and see what they're all about. So that brings this video to an end of my unboxing and review of Mackie's brand new CR3 XBT White Limited Edition Studio Monitors. And just a reminder that the link of these studio monitors will be down in the description below. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe down below. And I will see you for another video next time. Uh, 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 uh,